Happy Sabbath. At this time, we'll be having the Mission Spotlight. We started in a garage, but uh, we kind of progressed to a studio that we've, over the last eight years, built up and um, servicing us very well at the moment. Kimberly and Robert were called by God to do media ministry for children in Australia. At the time, Kimberly started writing songs and Robert was working at Sanitarium Health Food Company. One day as Robert was working, God revealed a plan. God spoke to me in the oven and said, look, you know, I've got this, we've got, I've got this ministry for you guys. I um, want you um, to do, not just do songs, but, um, you know, media. And he, he also said that the, this house, the house that I actually grew up in but wasn't living in at the time, was going to be the, like the headquarters in the future. I came home and told Kimberly, and she said, I'm not living in that house. <laughs> but they felt impressed to follow God's will. They moved in, built a studio, and now, after many challenges, run a fully operational children's media ministry. The King's Kids program began at the beginning of the pandemic. As churches closed their doors, there was a need for more children's programming. Within a week of their first brainstorming meeting, a small team recorded the first episode of King's Kids. They have continued to put out an episode every week since, focused on discipleship and based on the primary Sabbath school lesson. They've produced more than a hundred episodes. Came to our house, you can see it's been converted into a uh, studio. We have a control room, a studio, which is where we are at the moment. We have uh, hundreds of puppets mm -hmm. and lots of characters, lots of children, and, and a lot of people that are helping to support and be a part of this project. Yeah. Getting right to the heart of families and how we can connect them and develop their relationship with Christ. And Kimberly and Rob show that in everything they do, in the way they treat us as their staff, in the way they support us, and in the way. Uh, we challenge each other to move forward with the projects that we're working on. The feedback has been overwhelmingly positive, and now God has put a new project on their hearts. The King's Kids program that we're currently producing is a real discipleship one, which is trying to make a, a difference to children that already know something about God. But there's a project that we're working on and developing at the moment called The Rescue, which is going to be a really evangelistic project for children and families that don't know about God, that haven't been brought up in church, that don't know about Jesus, and the only time they've heard God is in slang language. Mm. And so they're the ones that we really want to reach. And what we'll be doing is taking the story of salvation and looking at God as the rescuer, somebody who sees us, who loves us, and has a plan for us, and how throughout time, he has laid out this plan to come and rescue his people. This project is something that will be available free on multiple platforms. So we're really hoping to reach out and connect with families across the world. This quarter, a portion of your 13th Sabbath offering will help support the creation of The Rescue, a three season series that travels through time and focuses on different aspects of the great controversy and how God has intervened to rescue his people. There's so much behind the scenes work that is put into a project like this. It's been a huge step of faith all the way through and sometimes we're not quite sure where the next bit of funding is going to come from, where the next bit of equipment is going to come from, the extra puppets, the sets, the design, cameras, lighting. There's so much involved. So that's what we need to continue to produce high quality kids content. Mm. And uh, without the help of um, people like yourself, that wouldn't happen as well as it does. So we need you guys, everybody, to jump in behind us and to support us with your funds, with your offering. Thank you for planning a generous 13th Sabbath offering this quarter that will help share the love of Jesus with kids across the South Pacific and around the world. on this cold but warm Sabbath, Christmas Sabbath, 
And I just have a very few announcements to point out. I would like for you to really look through your bulletin because I won't highlight everything. Um, one of them being for church board members. The church board meeting for December has been canceled, and it's been rescheduled for Sunday, January 15th at 10 a.m. So make note of that. There will not be a church board meeting this, uh, this month. And also, the next potluck will be the second Sabbath of January. So there won't be another fellowship meal until the second Sabbath of January. The third Sabbath of January, which is January 21st, will be our communion Sabbath. So prepare for, for that Sabbath as we look forward to that. Please look at your bulletin on the front. Our program today is a special program. It will not be in the same format that we're used to most Sabbaths. So follow along on your um, on your bulletin in the front, if you will. Happy Sabbath.
Good morning. We want to send a special welcome to each one of you. We are happy to be here at this warm place, right? You guys are not? I'm pretty happy to be here. <laughs> uh, we just want to have a special moment to welcome each one of you. We're happy to see you. We were this close to cancel the program for this morning. And at the same time, I realized that what a good thing that we were able to meet today at, at church. At this moment, I want to tell you something, especially for this side of the church, for you guys. You guys could close your, your eyes, your, your ears, okay? So this side of the church, I'm going, to, I'm going to tell you something. I know that it's kind of cold, but let me tell you something. That side of the church is a little bit warmer. The heaters are working <laughs> better than in this side. So we're going to do something in particular today in the morning. We want to invite to all of you to send that, especially for you guys. And then you're going to look someone that you have no idea what his name is. And then you're going to get closer to that person. And then you're going to say, Merry Christmas. Is that okay? Yeah. You're going to send that. And then you're going to say hi to each one of you. Because we want to be the most welcome, the most welcome, welcomest church in the, in, on town. And then I thought this is the time for us to give welcome to each one of, you, each one of us. Okay? This is your time, guys. So I'm going to do it myself. Good to see you, Steve. We just want to let you know, once again, this side of the church is way warmer than that side of the church, okay? It's for real. <laughs> yes, for real. <laughs> so if you want to be a little bit warmer, we're going to have church service for this side. <laughs> so you guys are welcome to switch places. Over here, it's a little bit warmer, okay? Studies have been made about which one is the most beautiful word that you could hear. I'm going to repeat it once again. Studies have been made about which one, what's the most beautiful word that you could hear or the most beautiful sentence that you could hear. Any one of you has any, any idea? The most beautiful, you tell me. Christmas? No, you're close to. That's, that's a good chance. You, mm, okay. Okay. You know, guys, the most beautiful sentence, a word that you could ever hear is when someone pronounces your name. Isn't it right? When someone comes to you and then he say. Welcome, and then in my case, it will say, Welcome, Alexander. And then you feel special because you belong to our place. So the fact that we have name tags is not, it's not only for the, for the sake of the pastor that is new. It's for each one of us that we're going to know the names of each one of us. And then we're going to make up this place the most beautiful place as we can know the names. What about, let's pray as we, as we start this program. Father in heaven, thank you so much for bringing us today at this place. We are happy to be here, Lord, but we are looking to your presence that you will be the one talking to us today. Thank you, Lord, for the willingness for the ones that came and the, one, the ones that are going to participate. But at the same time, we want to uh, ask you to be here and with the ones that are joining us online as well, Lord. Thank you. We ask all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm really excited because I love Christmas carols, and uh, this time of year, we don't have very many Sabbaths to be able to enjoy singing them, 
But this week we have several different ones. Today we're going to start with number 124. Away in a manger, we'll be singing the first and the third verses. Today's scripture reading is found in Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 14. And it says, Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you great tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you in this city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. For this hymn, I'm going to invite you to stand. It's song number 142, Angels We Have Heard on High. We'll be singing the first and the last verse. First and third, first and third verse, I'm sorry. Number 142, first and third verses.
seated. Happy Sabbath, church family. It is a true gift to me um, to stand here with your children this morning. Um, they are a gift to me, each of them. And honestly, they teach me more than I teach them during Sabbath school. I don't know if you've experienced that. Um, we are so, so thankful, and I am personally so thankful for them. Um, and we have prepared a song for you this morning, um, for you and to glorify God this morning. It's called Bethlehem Skies. And um, if you know it, please join us. Baby will be born humbly in a major. Dry eyes, the king is come. Death is lost in victory. Word. You were born to change it all A warrior, the fair and small Just a baby, sleeping in a manger All the world was waiting for you to come
the kids to go too far because it's time to gather the, the offering and this is the time for the children's story. So go to the back and get your baskets. Good morning. Oh, that was sad. Good morning. By the way, that song was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. It was, it was really nice. Okay, I'm going to tell you a story, but let me, let me, I need your help. Are you guys going to help me out? We're going to do this children's story. It's going to have sound effects, okay? So are you, gonna, you guys going to help me? And then when you hear, like, a, for example, an elephant was walking by, and then you guys are going to be doing, like, these three feet, okay? Do it. Okay, okay. That's the, you like that, don't you? So I'm going to tell you a story, okay? There was a time, there was a little ant, little ant. It was a little insect right there. And then she was living in the middle of the jungle. And then an ant doesn't live by itself. They live together. In fact, they have a new, huge houses, huge nest. You know, it's kind of amazing. But there was a problem. This little ant that lived in a, in a jungle, and then at that time, so many animals used to pass by, close their house, you know? And every single time that he was passing by an elephant, can you hear the elephant? An elephant was coming. All the ants got scared. They said, oh my goodness, they're going to destroy the house. They're going to destroy the house. And then the elephant was passing by, 
and boom, it destroyed the house. And then they have to build the house once again. Once the house was, once the house was ready, then suddenly they start listening to something. They heard some monkeys. Monkeys? Let, let them be the monkeys this time, okay? They heard some monkeys. They haven't had breakfast yet. And they heard like a, a huge tiger. The tigers were as well, okay? And they heard a dolphin in the jungle. No. <laughs> they heard... Huh? A polar bear in the jungle? Oh, they hear it's snakes. They hear the snakes. But then one of them heard something. They heard an elephant. An elephant? No, they heard the elephant. The elephant does? There's an elephant over there. <laughs> they heard an elephant. Can, can someone do better than that? An elephant. And then they heard the elephant was getting closer. The elephant was getting closer. And then all the ants, what are we going to do? What are they going to do? And then one of the ants, they say, you know what? I'm going to tackle the elephant. What? Yeah, let me do it. And then I'm going to just climb upon the tree. And once you guys, you guys are going to let me know when the elephant is coming down, uh, it's, it's passing by, so I will jump on the, on the elephant. The little ant says, so, oh. And then the elephant was coming. And he was getting closer. And he was getting closer. And then the ant who was on top of the tree, he jumped right there. And he fell on top of the elephant. And then all the ants who were on the, on the ground, they will say, you got it, you got it, you got it. Tackle down, tackle it down. And then the ant was getting in her back and it was getting closer to the, to the head. And then the ant got close to the neck of the elephant and all the ants who were on the ground, they were saying, now is your time. Choke him, choke him. How are they going to do that? It's your time, now you're going to choke the elephant. No, but that was not what the ant did. So it was getting closer, and it got close to the ear of the elephant. And that's a good idea. And then the elephant was just running and destroyed all the houses for all the animals. And then the ant started saying something like that. Dear elephant. And the elephant was walking. And then he stopped. Elephant. What? Who's talking to me? Elephant. Could you please be careful? Then the elephant was paying attention because the ant was right there in their ear. Could you please slow down because every single time that you're passing by, you destroy my house and our houses. And then the elephant he said, what? Did I just think what? Yes, you destroy my house. And then the elephant said, I'm sorry. I didn't know that. Yes. Could you please be careful every single time that you're passing by? And then the elephant said to the ant who was close to his ear, I'm sorry. I didn't know that. I'm not going to do it anymore. In fact, every single time that I'm passing by, I'm just going to do it slowly. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't mess up your house. You see? The message of the story. So many times we want to fix all the problems by choking the enemy. <laughs> and then it is way better just to have a conversation with someone. Just to be able to get your message across. To let the person how you feel. And then at the end, I promise you, you will gain a friend. And that's much better than to choke an elephant, okay? That's the story that we have for this morning. I hope you guys learned something. Did you guys learn something too? And you guys are doing a fantastic elephant. <laughs> okay, not so much. Okay, this is the story for this morning. You guys may go to your place. <laughs>
But be in Matthew 2, 1, 2, 10, and 11. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of King Herod, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jew? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And they went and had and when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. We're going to invite you to stand again as we sing uh, our next Christmas carol, which is, O Come All Ye Faithful, and we will see, that's 132, we'll sing all three verses.
shop so meager and poor, made bright with boils from ceiling to floor. And Conrad was sitting with a face of shine when he suddenly stopped as he twitched a twine and he said, Old friends, at dawn today, when the cock was crowing the night away, the Lord appeared in a dream to me and he said, I'm coming, your guest to be. So I've been busy with feet of stir, strewing my shop with branches of fir. The table is spread and the kettle is shined, and over the rafters the holly is twined. And now I will wait for my Lord to appear and listen closely so I will hear his steps as he nears my humble place. Then I'll open the door and look on his face. So his friends went home and left Conrad alone, for this was the happiest day he had known, for long since his family had passed away, and Conrad had spent a sad Christmas day. But he knew with the Lord as his guest that Christmas would be the dearest and blessed. So he listened with only joy in his heart, and with every sound he would rise with a start and look for the Lord to be at his door, like the dream he'd had a few hours before. So he ran to the window after hearing a sound, but all he could see was the snow-covered ground. There was a beggar whose shoes were torn, and all of his clothes were ragged and worn. But Conrad was touched, so he went to the door and he said, Your feet must be frozen and sore. I have some shoes in my shop and a coat that will keep you warm. So with grateful heart, the man went away. But Conrad noticed the time of day, and he wondered what made the dear Lord so late and how much longer he'd have to wait. Then he heard a knock at the door. But it was only a stranger once more. A bent old lady with a shawl of black and a bundle of kindling piled on her back. She asked only for a place to rest, but that was reserved for Conrad's great guest. Yet her voice seemed to plead, don't send me away. Let me rest a while on this Christmas day. So Conrad brewed her a steaming cup, and he told her to sit at the table and sup. But after she left, he was filled with dismay, for he saw that the hours were slipping away, and the Lord had not come as he said he would. And Conrad felt sure that he'd misunderstood. When out in the stillness, he heard a cry, Please help me. Tell me where am I? So he opened the door and stood disappointed as twice before. It was only a child who had wandered away and was lost from her family on this Christmas day. Again, Conrad's heart was heavy and sad, but he knew he could make this little girl glad. So he called her in and he wiped her tears and he quieted all of her childish fears. Then he led her back to her home once more. But as she entered his own darkened door, he knew that the Lord was not coming today for the hours of Christmas had passed away. So he went to his room and he knelt down to pray and Conrad asked, Lord, why did you delay? I wanted so much to see your face. Then in the silence, a voice he heard, lift up your head for I have kept my word. Three times my shadow crossed your floor. Three times I came to your lowly door for I was the beggar with bruised and cold feet, and I was the woman you gave something to eat, and I was the child on the homeless street. Three times I knocked, three times I came in, and each time I found the warmth of a friend. Of all the gifts, love is the best. I was honored to be your Christmas guest.
Happy Sabbath. As we prepare to give our offerings and return our tithes, will the deacons please come forward? What can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would give him a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would give him. I would do my honest part. But what? But what can I give him? I would give him my heart. Today's loose offering goes for our local church advance. Please bow your heads as we pray. Lord, as we talk, sing, and reflect about the birth of Jesus, help us dedicate the time and energy to seek you and to use these, our resources to honor you as king. Amen.
was nice. In my Bible, Luke chapter 2, verse 8, it says like this. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out of the field in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign for you, to you. You will find a babe wrapped in a swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with, with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on the earth peace, goodwill toward man. That was the message given to the shepherds more than 2,000 years ago. But that good news is still for us today. A Savior was born. I was reading my scripture, and then I connect the two chapters, Luke 2 and Matthew chapter 2. And in this Matthew, you will find the story of the wise man looking for Jesus. And then how are you going to connect the two? This book, The History of the Redemption, is giving us a clue that while this was going on at the, with the shepherds, the angels, 400 miles away, the wise men were able to saw something amazing in the sky, and it was the same event. 400 miles away. Let's say that from here to Minneapolis, the wise men were living so far in, some, in a town far away, and then they were able to see the light of the angels. This book is telling us that these wise men were, the East, were from the East philosophers. They belonged to a large and influential class that included men of noble birth and comprised much of the wealth and learning of their nation. Among these were many who imposed cruelty on people. Others were upright men who studied the indications of providence and nature and who were honored for their integrity and wisdom. Of this, character were, of this character were the wise men who came to Jesus. In chapter 2 of the book of Matthew, there is an amazing story. And I want to invite you guys to go with me to this to the, in, in the Bible. And then I'm going to start reading Matthew chapter 2 and then verse 1. Look, look with me in your Bibles. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men came from the east to Jerusalem. It was about a distance of 400 miles. So it might took them about three to four weeks to get to that place. And keep in mind that they were looking, they were guided by the star at night time. So they were able just to journey at night time. During the day, they were studying the scriptures. They were looking for the Hebrew writings and looking at the prophets. And as they walk and study, they confirm their interests. And they were so interested in that star. Wise men from the east of Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born 
king of the Jews. I want you to think about this. We have read this story so many times. But we know the quality of the king Herod. After this, he gave an order to kill all the kids in Bethlehem. And the wise men went to King Herod to ask for the next king. I'm telling you, this was a risky business. You come in to ask the king, where is the other king? It could be a sentence of death for them just to ask such a thing. But the wise men, just considering that they traveled for more than three, four weeks, if they have done it on foot, it could be two months. They travel all the way, looking at the star all the time, and during the day, it's starting, it's starting. Then they go to Jerusalem, and they ask the king, where is the king? It was a good reason to be killed. Look at this. The wise man had seen a mysterious light in the heavens upon the night when the glory of God floated the hills of Bethlehem. As the, as the light faded, a luminous star appeared and lingered in the sky. It was not a fixed star nor a planet, and the phenomenon excited the, the niece's interest. The star was a distance of a company of shining angels, but of this the wise men were ignorant. Yet they were impressed that the star was of, of, of a special importance for them. And look, and the story continues this way. Where is the king of the Jews? For we have seen the star in the east, and we have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, there was a trouble, and all Jerusalem with him. What was going on? The king heard something. Strangers were coming from the distance. And they were asking for the new king. Herod, who was a little bit paranoid, he says, I know what I want to do. They want to take my power. So all Jerusalem got afraid because they knew the kind of king that he was. They said, oh, something is going to happen. Something is going to happen. Let's be careful. Why these people are asking for the new king? And when he had gathered, ha, gathered them all, the chief priests and the scribes of the people together, he inquired the king, Herod the king, he inquired of them, where is the Christ, where is the Christ was to be born? So they say to him, in Bethlehem of Judea. For thus it is written by the prophets, but you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. King heard, heard that. And then he got afraid. And then he said, I'm not going to share my kingdom with anyone. You wise men, go adore him and make sure to come back and tell me where is the king. So I could go there and adore him. You guys know pretty well what were the intentions of this king. And the story goes in a way that the, king, that the wise men were told by the angels to take another route. And when they went back to their town, to their cities. And I'm sure they told to, to the people in their city about the good news of the new king of the Jews. The beautiful things. But you know what? What we're celebrating this season is not only about that Jesus was born. Of course, it is true. We don't know the date exactly. But something that we do celebrate with certainty is that Jesus is going to come back. Amen? That Jesus is going to come back. Jesus said, said it in the Bible. You can look with me in the Bible. It says like this in John chapter 14. Let not, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I will, I will have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. 
And if I go and prepare a place for you, this, I like this sentence, I will come again and receive you to myself, to where I am, there you, you may be also. And where I go, and where I go you know, and the way you know. Jesus was saying, the same Jesus who was born and whose wise men were looking for, now as an adult, Jesus was saying to his disciples and to all of us, I'm going to come back again. I'll take, you to, with, to my, I'll take you to my place. I'm going to make sure that you are with me. There is a mansion that I'm preparing for you, and you are going to be with me if you want, if you wish. Not too long, not too long after, in the book of Acts, Chapter 1, verse 11, the disciples were looking at the skies as Jesus was ascending towards the, towards the clouds. And then the angels came, to, came, came and they said to the disciples, you could see it in Acts chapter 1, verse 11, who said to them, Man of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? To the, into heaven? This same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven Will, co- will, will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven and he will come back again. That was the message that we have for us today. The good news about it. We don't only celebrate that Jesus was born. We celebrate as well that Jesus is going to come back. The message that we have as a seven-day Adventist is that Jesus will come again. That there is a solution for this planet. That there is a solution for each one of us. Jesus will come back again. And then I'm going to look with you in the, book, in the first book of Thessalonians. Look with me, if you may. It says like this. First Thessalonians chapter 4. And it says like this, verse 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, God will bring him, those who, sleep in, those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you, by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an, an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with, the, with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, come for one another with these words, that Jesus will come back. Jesus will come back. And that's the certainty that we have. Yes, of course, today we celebrate that Jesus was born, that the Savior was born, that the wise men were looking for Jesus, for the Savior. But then we as Adventists, we have an extended message that that Jesus who was born is going to come back, the one who was crucified, that he was resurrected, that he is in heaven. He promised not only once, not only twice, but more than a hundred times throughout the scriptures that he is going to come back. And that's the message that we have to, for this generation. I'm telling you, the wise men were looking for Jesus. And wise people still look for Jesus today. Are you looking for Jesus today? Are you looking for Jesus to come? Are you like the wise men, even though that all the reasons, all the proofs, all the journeys that they have, made that doesn't make any sense to people? The wise men, they say it in this book, he says over here, Abraham was walking by faith. Moses was by faith as well. Jacob was by faith. And there is a special place to the wise men that they were walking towards Jerusalem by faith as well. We're not looking towards Jerusalem, the country. We're looking towards heaven. And then we're walking by faith as well. So the question that we could ask in a morning like this, in a Christmas, before Christmas is, 
Are you looking for Jesus as well by faith? It's my prayer that your faith will grow, that you will look with Je for Jesus as the white men were looking for Jesus, that you will treasure in your heart, that you will live in a way, that you will talk, that you will experience Jesus, and then you will be counted with those that will gather together with Jesus Christ at his second time. His second time. Let's pray. Father in heaven, the Bible is telling us that there is an event that is coming, the most important in the whole universe. And this, it, it, and it is your second coming, Lord. Lord, we live in a planet, we live in a world that doesn't listen to you anymore. We just want to walk by faith, as Abraham did, as Moses, and as Jacob. We just want to be the wise people of this time, looking for you, living for you. And we're coming, and we want to offer you not only material gifts, we, would, we just want to give you our heart, that you may change us, that you will make us different. Thank you, Lord, once again. We want to give you a welcome in this place, but especially in our hearts, that you will change us little by little, and then that you will be able to recognize you as you come for the second time. Thank you once again. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Uh, song number 125, Joy to the World, a you very can. familiar hymn. Okay. I would like for you Sorry. to, I would like for you to um, look at the words, think about the words as we sing them. We'll be singing the first and the last verses of song number 125. Please stand. We are waiting for the king. Lord, please come soon. We already miss heaven. And we're looking forward to be there with you, with our loved ones, with our friends. But today, create in our hearts the certainty, the presence, the guidance of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Merry Christmas to each one of you guys.